Okay, so here's part two of the, the video lesson for section 5.5. Here's where we're going to work through some actual problems. And we're going to start with some applications involving compound interest. So we've already encountered these formulas for compound interest. We first saw those back in section 5.1. There's a formula for if you compound a certain number of times per year that looks like this. And there's a formula for if you compound continuously that looks like this. And notice that continuous compounding formula looks like the exponential growth models that we were just looking at in part one of this video lesson. It's got different letters. Instead of y equals a times e to the bx, it's a equals p times e to the rt, but it's the same pattern. We're just using different letters because they stand for something in particular in this kind of situation, but it's the same pattern. And that's because with compound interest, the if you have a, an account that is earning compound interest, the more money you have in the account, the more interest gets added on and the faster the amount grows. So the rate of growth is proportional to the amount of money. That's why it follows this kind of a model. Okay, let's work through some examples using these formulas. $2,500 is invested at 6.25% interest compounded continuously. What will be the amount after five years? Okay, first of all, which formula are we using here? Which of these two formulas? Well, since it says compounded continuously, we want the one for continuous compounding. A equals P times E to the RT. What do we need to find? Well, the question is, what will be the amount after five years? So which of these letters stands for that? A, the amount that we end up with at the end of that time. Okay, what's P? What number are we going to be putting into this formula in place of P? Make sure you say it really loud so I can hear you through the screen. Right, P is the starting amount, the present value, $2,500. What's R? What number are we putting into the formula in place of R? Shout it really loud. 0 0.0625. R stands for the interest rate, which is 6.25%. But when we put it into the formula, we're not putting in the number 6.25% we're putting it in as 0 0.0625. We're converting to a decimal, which means moving the decimal point two places. What's T? Remember, T stands for time. So that's the number of years, and here that would be five. And what is our final answer? When we put all these numbers into the formula and do the calculations, I would encourage you to pause the video, try putting this into your own calculator, and seeing if the number you get matches what I get. Okay, now here's me calculating the answer, so you can see how I do it. So I'm putting in P, which is 2500, times e to the, in parentheses, you may or might, may not need the parentheses, but just to be safe, let's put them in because it's e to this whole thing, r times t. So the r is 0 0.0625 times the t is 5. And that comes up as 3417.094853. And since we're talking money here, this represents an amount of money, it would make sense to round it either to the nearest whole dollar or to two places after the decimal point, the nearest whole cent. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to round this to 3417.09. 
and say that the answer is $3,417.09. So you started with $2,500, and at the end of five years, you end up with $3,417.09. Okay, part B. How long would it take for the amount to double? If you start with $2,500, you invest it at 6.25% interest compounded continuously. Which formula? Well, we're still talking about compounded continuously, so we're still working with A equals P times E to the RT. What do we need to find? The A, the P, the R, the T. Well, the question is how long, how much time? So we need to find T. What's P? Well, it's still $2,500. What's R? We're still working with the same interest rate, so R is still 0 0.0625. What's A? This time we're not trying to find A, we're putting in a number for A, but what number would that be? Hmm, how long would it take for the amount to double? So we're talking about the amount you went, end up with being double the amount you started with. So if you started with $2,500, doubling would mean that you reach two times that amount, which is $500. So we've got numbers that we're putting in for P and R and A, and we're trying to find T. So the equation looks like this. 5,000 equals 2,500 times E to the 0 0.0625 T. So now we have to solve that equation. Here are the steps that we go through to solve that equation and get the number for T. First, divide both sides by 2,500. Okay, then over here, the 5,000 divided by the 2,500 is 2, and that's equal to e to the 0 0.0625t. Now, how do we get that e out of the way? How do we undo the e? With its inverse, ln, the natural logarithm function. So we're going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. ln of 2 equals ln of e to the 0 0.0625t. But ln undoes what the e does. So now it says ln of 2 equals 0 0.0625t. Now, how do we go from 0 0.0625t to just t? When you have a number times t and you want just t, divide both sides of the equation by that number, that coefficient on the t. So t is the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.0625. Let's do that on the calculator. Hey, calculator, what is the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.0625? And it tells me it's 11.09035489. So the answer, the time that it takes, is about 11.1 years. Okay, next example. What is the interest rate if $400 compounded continuously grows to $1,000 in 12 years? Which formula are we using? Well, it's still asking about compounded continuously, so continuous compounding, A equals P times E to the RT. What do we need to find? Well, this time the question is, what is the interest rate? So we need to find R. Okay, what's P? P is the present value or the starting amount, the principal, and that is $400. What is, uh oh, that was supposed to be a T. What is T? 12 years. What's A? The amount we end up with, $1,000. What's the equation? When we plug in the numbers, 1,000 equals 400 times e to the r times 12. So that's the equation we need to solve.
Now let's solve it. 1,000 equals 400 times e to the r times 12. What do we do first? Get rid of that 400 in front of the e part by dividing both sides by 400. So 1,000 divided by 400 is 2.5, and that's equal to e to the 12r. How do we get rid of the e? With ln. So the ln of 2.5 equals the ln of e to the something is just the something, 12r. Now, how do we go from 12r to just r? Divide both sides by 12. So r is ln of 2.5 divided by 12. The calculator tells me that that is 0 0.07635756161. So that's the interest rate. But if we want to give it in the form of a percent, to convert to a percent, just move the decimal point over two places. R is about 7.6%. Okay, next question. How much must be invested now at 4.5% interest compounded quarterly in order to have $600,000 at the end of 25 years? Which of these two formulas are we going to be working with? Now, this time it doesn't say that it's compounded continuously. Instead, it's compounded quarterly. So we're going to use the first formula, the one for when it's compounded only a certain number of times per year. So A equals P times the quantity 1 plus R over N to the NT. What do we need to find? Well, the question is, how much must be invested now? Which of these letters is that? P. P is what we're trying to find. Okay, that means we should have numbers that we can plug in for all of these other letters. What's R? Well, R stands for the interest rate. That would be 4.5 or 4.5%, but when we put it into the formula as a decimal, it would be 0 0.045. What's N? N compoundings per year. That's how many times per year the interest is compounded. If it's compounded quarterly, that means four times a year. So N would be four. What's T? T is the time, the number of years. It says 25 years, so T is 25. What's A? A is the final amount that we want to end up with. So that would be $600,000. That's the amount we want to end up with at the end of the 25 years. So when we put all those numbers into the formula, we get the equation 600,000 equals P times 1 plus 0 0.045 over 4 to the 4 times 25 power. So that's the equation we need to solve to get our answer, our number for P. Notice how we've got P times, and then the rest of this is just going to evaluate to some particular number. So we have P times whatever this number is. We want to get just P so I can divide both sides of the equation by that number that P is being multiplied by. So then P by itself on one side would be equal to 600,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.045 over 4, to the 4 times 25 power. So all we have to do is calculate that. Let me show you what that looks like on the calculator. This is another place where I would recommend that you try it yourself to make sure you get the same answer that I do. So you can make sure you're putting this into the calculator correctly because it's a little bit complicated. So I'm going to put in 600,000, whoops, 600,000 divided by parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.045, whoops, 0 0.045 divided by 4, close parentheses, raised to the parenthesis 4 times 25, close parentheses power. I want to make sure that 4 times 25 is the power. So the calculator gave me 196018.8281. So about 19601 or $196,018.83.